106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Right on, and welcome to Music Saturday. This is Dr. Bones with the Mad Andersons and our special guest, Mojave no uh, Nomads. How's it going, guys? Good, good. How about you? Not no, to... Nomads, by the way, but... Sorry, how do you say, how do you say it? Cool. Hobby Nomads. Mojave Nomads? Okay. I, my, my apologies. Like, no, you're good. I, was, I wasn't sure quite pronounce it, so I tried the best I could there. <laughs> you so, did great. You did great. <laughs> so, guys, first off, Moji no Nomads, where did that name come from? That's kind of uh, unique in its own way. So uh, we kind of got it from the Mojave Desert um, in Nevada and California. Our uh, lead singer was born in Nevada. And uh, we honestly just, we like the name Mojave. We like the, the spirit of the desert. And, you know, we kind of thought it was a good name. And it encompassed kind of how we, we sound. So that's how we got it. No, that's... That's really cool, man, because I never would have put that together at all, at all. And it's it's a cool background, and just just uh, you're pretty much just saying like you know kind of almost like at one with the desert. That's kind of a, a, a very very spiritual, and uh, it just wow, it just kind of sticks out. So that's uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that answer at all. Felt like that was a good name. Oh oh yeah, for sure. So, since you guys have been together, how how have you... Hello? Can you hear us? Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I think we lost you there for a second. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep, we're good. Okay. So, since you guys have been together and when you guys first started jamming, did you guys have like a certain idea in mind of what you wanted to play or just kind of come together and just start jamming and kind of took it from there? Well, we originated at pretty much just blues rock, honestly. Um, the drummer and myself, I play the guitar, um, we would jam a lot in high school, um, play a lot of like black easy sound and stuff. And, uh, we just jam for people in like my backyard, we'd have barbecues and just play blues music. Um, and then, you know, we started diversifying our own musical tastes and what we wanted to sound like. And then one day we just decided we wanted to go for it. And, uh, we just kind of started playing and tried to, you know, get away from the bluesy a little bit, but it's still in us. And, uh, you know. The record came out. Oh, wait on, Nolan, Catherine. Oops. <laughs> Let's see. Actually, I was trying to look for some information on you guys online and didn't find a whole lot on you. So, how long have you been together then? And is this the original lineup? And um, we've been together now since last October um, ah. as a whole band. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, the concept kind of started the summer previous. Um, not all of our members were there. We we lacked a bassist, and then Mason here on the keys. He wasn't with us yet, and he's he's my little brother also. So we pulled him in when we needed him. Right on. And uh, so, but that's we kind of hit it hard in October, and we've we've played shows pretty much every weekend since. Um, a lot of times more than that, and uh, we've we've done some things with our radio stations and our TV stations and things like that. 
and just try to stay as busy as we can and push ourselves as hard as we can and write as much music as we can. Mm. Great. Now, are you guys doing like, I know this, uh, well, I mean, not a weird question, but are you guys doing covers at this point or is it all original? Um, we throw in a few covers now and then. Um, when we started, obviously there was a lot more covers because we didn't have as much material. Right. But uh, at this point, we're playing in front of more people nowadays, so we'd rather get our own music heard than play covers. And we, we're starting to kind of get into the bigger music scene in Utah, okay. where people don't want to, they're out there to hear original music. They're not there to hear covers. Right. And they, they're looking for talented artists. So uh, we're trying to showcase what we are the best we can and uh, play less covers nowadays. Well, fair enough. Now, gigging as much as you guys do, do you guys find you're getting more and more new faces like yeah, at each show, or is it somewhat the same crowd? Definitely new faces. Um, so we're up here in the northern end of Utah where the scene is dying, but we have been playing more and more in the Provo area. I don't know if you guys are familiar with there, but that's kind of where Imagine Dragons and Neon Trees and uh, the Moth and the Flame all came right. out of in the past couple years, and uh, that's where the scene is big in Utah. And we've been playing there more and more, and you know, all of our friends are up, up north here, and we've, you know, gradually lost the friend crowd. Right. They don't come out to all of our shows anymore. But now <laughs> we have a crowd of people who are genuinely fans, and they come to our shows because they enjoy our music, not because they are our friends. Well, no. So but, go ahead. Sorry. It's starting to be, you know, more a lot more organic. Well, you know, and that's good. I mean, and it shows progress too, right? I mean, the fact that <clears throat> more and more people are coming out and seeing different faces, I mean, that's going to give you some sense of accomplishment. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's there's a lot of people who are really in touch with the national scene in Provo as well. And we're really starting to get in with those individuals, um, venue people that run the venues, promoters, and, uh, you know, people in radio and things like that. And it's it's really benefiting us these past couple months, and we've gotten on a lot better gigs and just had a lot better opportunities come our way. All right on, nice. So we're going to get to your uh, song on this NYC Factory Pass compilation, and this is Mojave Nomads, and the song's called Fat Quarter Stack. Dig this. Mojave Nomads, a fat core stack. Uh, now, this uh, pretty much, let's say, is a perfect example of the blues. 
with the keys and the kind of the, the hardcore riffs with some uh, good kind of like uh, sound like a um, having a having a slide in your finger and like really cool and like you know the kind of raspy kind of like really kind of heartfelt vocals and 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 just the vocals alone were fantastic a really good tune thank you no one got yeah, I really liked it too. Um, actually, I was listening to it. Uh, who do you guys? What do I want to say? Oh, so everybody has people that they sort of look up to in terms of influences and that. And so I was wondering who your influences are. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. It fluctuates a lot, to be honest with you. When I, that's what I when I wrote yeah. that yeah when I wrote that riff originally the main kind of riff that we wrote the song off of. I, yeah. My favorite band was the Black Keys at the time. Um, I also was kind of inspired by uh, Kanye West and Jay Z's No Church in the Wild. Mm-hmm. If you guys are familiar with that at all, um, it's off their Watch the Throne album. And I just loved the way that that <coughs> was heavy like that. And I kind of wanted that kind of feel on the drums and the kick to support a riff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I just kind of wrote the vocals from there. And then we pieced this, the rest of the song together as a whole band. But uh, honestly, as far as influences in that song, I'd say, I don't know, maybe a little bit of Foles, Mace, would you say? Foles maybe in the little uh, jammy part, and we really like Portugal the Man as well. Yeah, it's so, really good, affected stuff. Yeah. So uh, the next question would be is your writing process. Like how do you guys kind of come together with the songs? Like kind of who starts the ball rolling, or do you guys kind of all come together at once, or how does it work? Um, it seems to be different almost every time. Um, with that one, like I said, that was a riff I'd had for a while before the band was official or anything. Right. And uh, but I knew I liked it and I knew I wanted to make something of it. And uh, I just kind of wrote the the vocal melody and then we got together as a band and wrote the lyrics and uh, wrote kind of the bridgey part and the outro and all that stuff. I just had the the shell of the song really. And then we got together and polished it. And we also, I mean, some of it came together in the studio also, as, long, as well as a lot of the other songs. So, oh, honestly, I think the songwriting process could go on forever if we, <laughs> if we wanted it to. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah. we, we're, we play it live and we add little things every, you know, every month or so. Right on. So, uh, if, since you're adding little bits and pieces monthly, would that eventually carry over into the studio or...? Um, probably not. We, we've been writing a lot of new material lately and, uh, we'll go probably, we're hoping to go in the fall, but it might be maybe spring, honestly, to get back into the studio. We want this next one to be really polished. Right. We're going to one of the best studios in the state and, uh, we're going to really work on these tunes. So I don't think that we'll get back into the studio to record any of the songs off our first EP unless you know, we got the opportunity to do it and not have to pay for it, then we'd right. love to do that. So I think going forward, we're we're thinking forward as well. Well, right on. I mean, well, that's the way to go, because, I mean, you always got to think ahead, especially in the music business, right? Because anything can happen, like, literally the drop of a hat. Yep, so, absolutely. So Absolutely. We are going to get into another track off uh, this compilation, and this band is called... Well, if, trying, to, trying to see... Uh, how I would pronounce it, but it's a uh, Paganef, like <laughs> Paganef, I guess. And the song is called. That one Pardon? I couldn't figure out how to pronounce that one. Yeah. So this is, uh, we'll say Paganef, and then I apologize if, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but here we go with their song, Oh Girl. Shores. I 